So dear all, uh, in the previous uh, recording, we started from here. Uh, then we discussed about the hepatitis B virus structure, then hepatitis B transmission. And now we are here uh, to discuss a little about the hepatitis B infection. So infection by HBV can take a variety path. There is a marked difference between acute and chronic HBV infection. If an individual is infected with HBV, acute hepatitis can result. Most such cases will, will resolve spontaneously as the patient clears the virus. About 5% of cases of acute hepatitis B will progress to chronic hepatitis B. So, from this discussion, uh, we say that uh, hepatitis B is further, hepatitis B has further two categories based upon the infection that is acute hepatitis B and chronic hepatitis B. So, acute hepatitis B, uh, many cases are subclinical. Uh, in about a third of the cases, the patient exhibit symptoms of the disease and the symptoms include feeling unwell, uh, low grade fever, nausea and abdominal pain. Uh, in the case of acute hepatitis, uh, jaundice, dark urine and other evidences of liver damage appears. A long period of gradual recovery marked by fatigue and malaise follows as the damaged liver recovers. This means that when the damaged liver uh, is recovering from acute hepatitis B, that times uh, the feelings or the symptoms are fatigue and malaise. So, however, in a few cases, less than 1% uh, of the cases, uh, the patient develops fulminant hepatitis causing sudden massive liver damage. Survival without a liver transplant is uncommon. Uh, a fulminant hepatitis, uh, we discussed here that the uh, very less cases of acute hepatitis, uh, less than 1 percent patients develops fulminant hepatitis. So now what is fulminant hepatitis? Fulminant hepatitis is a rare syndrome of massive necrosis of liver parenchyma and a decrease in liver size which is also called a acute yellow atrophy and this fulminant hepatitis usually occurs uh, after infection with, with, with hepatitis viruses. This fulminant hepatitis may also be due to exposure to toxic uh, agents or drug induced injury. So uh, in the case of uh, uh, acute hepatitis, a very less number of people means less than 1% of patients develop uh, develops a fulminant hepatitis which cause sudden massive liver damage and in that case survival without, without a liver transplant is uncommon means that uh, the only option then is the liver transplant. Uh, if a case of hepatitis persists for more than 6 months, the condition is considered to have become chronic. So, if we we want we want to differentiate uh, uh, in a single line be, between hepatitis acute hepatitis B and chronic hepatitis B. So then we can say that um, hep acute hepatitis B uh, uh, is lasting within six months, and if uh, hepatitis B persists for more than six months, the condition is then considered. Uh, as chronic hepatitis B. So, now the mm, chronic hepatitis B. So, most individuals suffering from acute hepatitis B clear the virus successfully, but some fails to do so and develop chronic hepatitis B. People infected uh, when very young are the most likely to become chronic carriers. The risk for infants is about 90 percent, in children of 1 to 5 years about 25 to 
fifty percent. Adolescents and young adults have a much lower risk, only six to ten percent. And uh, I will tell you why in the young adults uh, the risk is lower, and that is only six to ten percent. Anyhow, overall, up to ten percent of infected patients become chronic carriers of the virus. For some, the condition is essentially asymptomatic, means they are considered inactive carriers and have a low risk of progressing. to clinical disease uh many others uh, suffer from uh malaise loss of appetite and general fatigue but usually without evidence of jaundice in acute hepatitis uh, the jaundice appear in the jaundice occur and in this case the chronic hepatitis b usually without evidence of jaundice though there is loss of appetite and general fatigue so uh, in case in which the chronic infection results in liver cirrhosis the patient becomes seriously ill tests of liver function usually follow leading to a diagnosis without treatment the prognosis is poor but this varies liver cancer develops in some cases in fact liver cancer is the most prevalent form of cancer in sub saharan africa and east asia areas where hepatitis b is extremely common the one thing which i wanted to clear here that hepatitis is worldwide disease but there is a significant difference in the clinical expressions of expression of hepatitis between areas of high prevalence and those of low prevalence so here i am going to uh, discuss a little about this point that uh, in high prevalence like asia asian countries hbv infection tends to be acquired around the time of birth which we call uh, prenatal, perinatal uh, from infected mothers as a consequence the immune system does not recognize a difference between the virus and the host and a high level of immunologic tolerance ensues but because of this tolerance the infection is not accompanied by acute hepatitis instead a chronic usually lifelong infection is established so that's the reason in 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 countries in high prevalent prevalence uh, countries uh, which are the asian countries here in in, in asian countries is bv infection is highly prevalent prevalent so this is the case that uh, uh, the immune system does not recognize it a difference between the virus and the host uh, as uh, the hbv infection is acquired around the time of birth uh, and because of this tolerance the infection is not accompanied by by acute hepatitis and a chronic usually lifelong infection is established uh, this is the case in about 90% of infected persons in spite of the immunologic tolerance to hbv some liver injury occurs and there is a high risk of death from liver diseases or liver disease especially among men by contrast in low prevalence like the countries in the west most acute infections by hbv occur from exposure to infected blood or other body fluids uh, it is upon a disease of young adults uh, in the west in the low prevalence countries uh a disease of the young adults who are participating participating in risky behaviors like injecting drug use or sexual promis uh, promiscuity uh, the long term intimate non sexual contact with an infected individual can also transmit hbv uh, infected people who are immunocompetent component, component uh, uh, sorry 
those infected people who are who have healthy immune system who are immunocompetent develop a strong immune response and we know when that, that, that we already discussed that, that the strong immune when a strong immune response is developed though, the, that leads to the acute hepatitis and the virus is cleared in all patients about 1% of those uh, infected persons remains and they go to chronic conditions these pa these, these these patients in the west countries we have the uh, HPV prevalence is lower as compared to Asian countries. These patients have a much lower incidence of chronic disease and of liver cancer. How HPV is diagnosed though? So, the regarding the diagnosis of hepatitis B virus, the diagnosis is usually based on symptoms followed by tests of uh, liver function that we call liver function test. A serologic test can detect HBV antigen and antibodies. The presence of hepatitis B surface antigen HBSAG indicates the presence of the virus in the blood. After the virus is cleared, anti-HB appears uh, and the patient is considered immune. When the anti surface antibody uh, appears, the patient is considered immune. Detection of the hepatitis B E antigen, HBEAG, hepatitis B and E antigen is a marker for the core of the virus, usually means that the virus is replicating vigorously. If this antigen disappears and is replaced by antibodies against it, this usually means that liver disease associated with viral reproduction has diminished. It also means that the patient is less infectious to others. So, now here we are going to discuss a little bit about the treatment of hepatitis B virus. So, the there is no spe specific treatment for acute hepatitis B virus. For chronic HPV infection, there are currently seven approved treatments. However, none of these is reliably curative, largely because the DNA of the virus becomes integrated into the genome of the host. The aim of treatment for chronic HBV infection is to diminish the DNA of the virus to levels that are undetectable with the PCR assay. Treatment decisions are made on the basis of several factors such as patient age and the stage of the disease. Co-infections with HIV often occur and complicate treatment. Uh, available antiviral, antiviral uh, include uh, alpha interferon and uh, pig interferon as well as several nucleoside new analogues such as uh, lamiodine, uh, adifoil. Uh, anti uh, anticaver uh, and tenofovir df the course of treatment typically extends over several months combination of at least two drugs are recommended to minimize development of resistance liver transplantation is often a final option in treatment in the last uh, we can prevent uh, hepatitis b virus by using uh, disposable needles and syringes, use of barrier type contraception, screening of blood for transfusion, vaccination for high risk groups uh, people are recommended which include healthcare workers exposed to blood and blood products, people undergoing hemodialysis, patients with and staff uh, at mental health healthcare institutions, uh, injecting drug users and homosexually active men. Hepatitis B vaccines uh, are now part of the childhood immunization schedule. So this was all about the hepatitis B and in next recording inshallah um, we will discuss hepatitis C virus uh, in a little bit detail. So thank you for uh, being with me and hope you, you learned many things here. Thank you very much.